What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Millsy. I got the whole talk about her, and we are back for another episode of Millsy Opens the Show. Where I open some sealed bird for you. March of Machine, the aftermath is out, and for a lot of people, probably not. Um, a set a lot of people are loving to open only 50 cards really in all reality i think this is a set where if you're looking for something just go buy the single um there's not a ton of like high-end chase stuff in the set but i think if you're someone who wants to build around one of these commanders there is a lot of great stuff in it we're opening up a bundle today and a couple collector boosters didn't want to put too too much into the set but still wanted the privilege of opening it here's a little <laughs> intro card on losing your spark as of course, a couple of the planeswalkers in the set have lost their spark. They're no longer planeswalkers. Not a ton I expect to come in here. We got some lands. We got our epilogue boosters, which of course are very thin compared to our normal boosters. And our dice. Get that off to the side. Pretty dice. I love buying the bundles. I love the dice. Five card boosters. Only eight. And then our land pack with our spark rupture there. So let's uh, let's open up our epilogue booster bundle and we'll just work these collector boosters in. So what cards am I looking for out of Aftermath? That's probably a great option to start with. Uh, I love the look. The new cigar could be kind of fun for an angel's deck. Personally, I'm looking for the Narset. The card looks pretty darn cool. Um, as well as the Sarkin looks kind of fun. So we get two uncommons here. Plarg and Nasari, another one of the team ups that didn't make it into March of the Machines, Cold and Warmonger. And there we go, our showcase filter out. This is a card that I'm kind of intrigued to see what play this gets. It says return on non creature, non land permits, their owner's hands, three and three mana, two and one and two blue. I'm kind of intrigued to see how much play filter out sees. It seems like it's kind of a, if you think about it, it's kind of a budget cyclonic rift i feel like it could see some good play uh as far as other cards in the set that i'm excited for i really just am loving all the new commanders we're gonna see a bunch of them get brewed in the channel if you're looking for those copper heart vanguard reckless handling is our little showcase card and then a warrior token um lots of lots of cool new legendaries uh really love like i said i love the new nurse nissa seems pretty cool the new karn seems pretty cool there's a lot of great new uh, legendary creatures that i think a lot of people are going to enjoy to brew around but i'm hoping to do all of them over on the channel so if you're looking for any of them in particular go check it out deification seems kind of cool choose a planeswalker type so for most planeswalkers their type is their name so like there's a bunch of nissa planeswalkers right that have nissa as their name Planeswalkers of the Chosen type have Hexproof, and then if you control, as long as you control a creature, if damage dealt to that Planeswalker, you control of the Chosen type would be put, result in all loyalty counters being removed. Instead, remove all but one. A way to protect a lot of your Planeswalkers if you're playing a lot of the similar name. Under City of People. And then Tolerian Contempt. Kind of interesting, when there's a battlefield, put a rejection counter on each creature your opponents control, so it goes on everything. Then at the beginning of your end step, for each opponent, choose up to one target creature. They have the rejection counter and they put it in the top or bottom so a way to kind of remove a whole board but over time it seems like a kind of interesting effect kind of way to have fun here we go a pretty colligan warmonger there in the halo foil that looks pretty cool another colligan warmonger in that uh foil latch we see p and lr kind of interesting console revival thopters have haste whenever you play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile you get a one one thopter Tranquil frill bag, some new dinos. Love it. Love it, love it. And all these dinos come in that Ixalan frame that we're going to see later this year and early next year when we go to Ixalan. This one has some effects when it comes into the battlefield. We see Tyvar the Bellicose. This is one that I'm kind of intrigued to see if it gets any play. Whenever one or more elves you control attack, they gain death touch. And then each creature control has whenever this a mana ability of this creature resolves. Put a number of plus and plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana the, the creature produced. Only two once per turn. I find this kind of an interesting effect. I don't know how many elves deck are truly going to love a card like this, but I'm intrigued to see if they do use it. And then Rocco Street Chef. Beginning your end step, each player exiles the top card of their library until the end of your next turn. Each player may play the card they exiled this way. And then whenever a player plays a land from exile or casts a spell, you put a plus one plus two encounter on target creature and create a food. So kind of Jeskai, f or sorry, Naya Food, which seems kind of interesting. Playing things from exile. Seems like a great deck for something like Fall Torn, that pre-con that we got out of Commander Legends. Um, 
Rocco is kind of interesting. It's probably it's not my favorite of the commanders we got out of the set, but it seems interesting for sure. There we go. The new Niv Mizzet Supreme. Niv Mizzet is here. Flying Hexproof from Multicolored. And each instant sorcery in your graveyard that's exactly two colors says Jumpstar. So you can pitch a card to cast it from your graveyard. Kind of interesting for sure. Blot out. And there we go. We see the uh, Ixalan frame on our dinos. This is the other dino in the set. Harness is a snubber. And whatever deals coming in, which will play a return target artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. Way to get things back. Kind of interesting. I wonder how much play this will see in actual dinos decks. But remember, we have to kind of keep this with a grain of salt because you know we haven't gone back to Ixalan yet, which means there could be a new dino commander that wants something like that. Aya's Oath's Worn New Knight. Whenever it deals damage to a player, you put a counter on it. If it has less than four, and then if it has exactly four, you get to search your library for a card and put it in your hand. Seems kind of interesting. Filter out. There we are. There we are the card we saw before. And then Metropolis Reformer, a new angel, angel cleric. You have Hexproof, and then whenever it's dealt damage, you gain that much life. Kind of an interesting card. Uh, I like seeing new angels. Angels are pretty cool creature type, and seeing it's both an angel and a cleric is pretty great for anyone who has an angel or a cleric's death. Cosmic Rebirth. Ooh, there we go. We see Nashi, Moon's Legacy. Menace Ward 1, whenever it is Hex, I up to one target legendary or rat card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. Saltai Rats, anybody? <laughs> Saltai Legends, kind of an interesting card. I'm intrigued to see what people do with that one. Campus Renovation, which I honestly thought was a reprint of a card from um, Strixhaven until I realized it's it's like a card from Strixhaven, but slightly different. And there's Deification, our um, version of the card before, been that pretty uh frame there identification seems like a really interesting card i'm intrigued to see how much it gets played i imagine in your super friends decks that's going to see a lot more play to protect your important planeswalkers like a like a teferi or some other ones another just regular foil called again warmonger markov baron and that foil latchman you can barely see it under the background lifelink other vampires get plus one plus one and madness cost pretty good for those vampire style decks who want that dranith ruins new land from the set Two and tap, but two plus one plus one kind of a non-human creature then in a battlefield's turn. Kind of interesting effect. Here we go. We got an extended art Rocco. And there we go. Joriel, Voice of Zalfir. Uh, this is uh, the buy a box promo if you buy a box. But otherwise, beginning of combat, up to one land you control becomes an XX bird with flying and haste. Where X is the number of the cards in your hand. It's still land. Whenever land creature you go to just coming damage to a player, draw a card. And then we see the new Danitha. Vigilance, trample life linked. Once during each of your turns, you may cast an aura equipment spell from your graveyard. Helps you recycle those equipment out of your graveyard. Kind of an interesting card. Danith, of course, has always cared about auras and equipment, so I think that's kind of interesting. And a smite, feast of the victorious dead, the Kenris Royal Funeral. This is the card we saw first before anything else. When there's a battlefield, exile up to two target legendary creatures from your graveyard. You draw X cards and lose the X life, or X is the greatest mana value among them, and then legendary spell. Does your cast cost one less cast for each card exiled with it? So you get a little bit of reduction in cost. Markov Baron. And there we go. We see Karn. Karn, Legacy Reforged, five mana star star. Stars equal to the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. So at minimum, he, uh, he'd be 5-5 five, five when he comes down. At the beginning of your upkeep, add colorless mana for each artifact you control. This man can't be spent to cast non-artifact spell. So on the turn, you do not lose a mana as steps and phases end. Seems like a bonkers card, especially if you're playing colorless. Um, and if you play a big artifact deck where you can just take advantage of that, seems super good. Just ramp and ramp and ramp and get up into those big artifacts. They're going to help you push the game out. There you see Danitha again. Spark Rupture, just like our um, promo there. As it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. And then... Each plane's archer with one or more loyalty counters on it loses all abilities and is a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of loyalty counters on it. So if you want to get rid of uh, planeswalkers, that's one way to do it. And that filter out there is our last card. One more collector booster. Like I said, I don't expect much from this set, but it's still fun to open. It's still fun to see some of it and get some cards. Um, happy to see the Karn. Karn's kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting card. And I do like the look of Tyvar. I've been wanting to build elves for a little bit. So it's kind of, I feel like one of those cards that could help me do that. Goldfinger Thopterix, Goldforge Thopterix, a card that kind of interests me. Love this art, this um, coiner. Flying Lifelink, each legendary permanent you control has Ward 2. It's an artifact, so this is going to go into a lot of these artifact decks, I think. You know, your Urza decks and things like that probably fits really well into one of those. And I love the Halo flow on that one. That one's pretty 
Campus renovation. We see another Nashi in foil. Here we go. Cura, Sovereign of the Deep. Uh, as you see this video, this will be coming out this week. My Cura list will be coming out this week for your Sea, um, sea Monsters deck. And here we go. Sigarda, Font of Blessing. Let's get a Thopter. Signs comes. This one seems kind of cool for the humans or angels. Of course, all of Sigarda's cards have always cared about humans. So you can cast humans and angel spells from the top of your library. All your permanents besides this have hexproof, and you can look at the top card of your library at any time. This feels great for like a Selesnya Angels deck. Just casting those angels from, angels from the top, you get green to ramp, kind of like the look of a card like that. And then we get a foil etched tranquil frill back. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my opening of Martha Machine after that. Like I said, didn't really want to open too, too much. You see the spark rupture there. Didn't really want to open up too, too much of it because, again, there's only one or only a few cards I really truly really care about. But I like to open up these sets. I love collecting the bundle dice and things like that. So I thought, why not? What do you guys think of Mar Mar the Machine, the Aftermath? Are you picking up any? Or are you going to steer clear of it? Like I said, I really truly feel like unless you're really looking for something from the set, steer clear of it. It's not a set that's going to give you a ton of value like other sets when you open them up. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and I will catch you guys next time.